Greetings, let's talk about how I write down my chili pepper crosses. Welcome to Peppers and Glowworms, a channel dedicated to hot chili peppers and coldly glowing glowworms. <coughs> Believe it or not, this is actually a requested video. I have explained my system of writing down chili pepper crosses in some older videos like these. With more or less success, I guess. But it is perhaps indeed a good idea to have a dedicated video just on that topic. I will illustrate it using a fictional cross of fictional chili pepper varieties. Hmm, what should I use? Oh, I know. The Peruvian death pepper. And the Guatemalan insanity pepper. First, we need to abbreviate the variety names. Therefore, PDP for the Peruvian death pepper and GIP for the Guatemalan insanity pepper. Now, um, don't worry, I'll be using what looks like mathematical operators, but it has nothing to do with math, at least not more than um, everything else. Anyway, the procedure itself is pretty much straightforward. I use a multiplication sign or an X to mark the crossing and I arrange the abbreviations of the different varieties accordingly. The female partner of the cross always ends up on the right side. Therefore, we have two possibilities with the cross of the Guatemalan insanity pepper and the Peruvian death pepper. And those two are not necessarily identical. This is because the male usually only contributes the DNA of its nucleus to the cross, while the female contributes also um, other elements like the plastids, which uh, include the chloroplasts. And uh, the offspring also grow on this uh, plant, so um, hybrids tend to resemble the mother more than the father, which can also be observed in the very familiar crosses between donkeys and horses. Now there are a few plants which do not conform to this rule of thumb, but as far as I know, peppers are not among them. Let's say we like this cross where the Peruvian death pepper was the mother, so we uh, pollinate it um, with itself for a few generations, uh, how do I write this down? Well, um, I'm just simply using some brackets and a little number to count the generations. Now let's say after five generations we decide to reintroduce some of the genetic material of the Guatemalan insanity pepper and do a little back cross. Once again, there are two possibilities. The Guatemalan insanity pepper can be the father or the mother. At first I always highlighted the oldest female ancestor, but um, this is pretty much redundant since um, the one on the most right hand side is always the oldest female in the cross and therefore the source of the mitochondria, chloroplasts and the like. On the other hand it helps to write the multiplication sign from the last cross in bold. This makes it uh, a bit easier to read. And that's all there is to it. And those rules can be applied to further crosses or bouts of self-pollination. For example, if we self-pollinate the cross where the Guatemalan insanity pepper was the father, we end up with this, for example, after four generations. But uh, let's have a look at uh, some real-world examples now. Here is some older footage of my Ahi Charipa, which is a cross between the Carolina Reaper chocolate as the father and Ahi Charapita as the mother. It is currently in its F2 generation. It gets a bit more complicated with my Cariolokia Scripa F2, which is a multiple hybrid between Carioca, Budiolokia, Trinidad Scorpion Muruga Red and Carolina Reaper. I'll update and taste test soon. 
Now with my good luck chili pepper, the system is stretched beyond its limits, I guess. It's uh, a bit too complicated to uh, take it all in in one view. Anyway. Oh.